Good morning. You're joining with ITN News and I'm Pankaj Chakalatunga. First, the news headlines. The President emphasizes the need for formulating a national education policy. Railways Locomotive Engine Drivers Union calls off the strike. The central bank warns that coronavirus outbreak will affect Sri Lanka's economic growth. Sri Lanka made Vega EVX unveiled at the International Motor Show in Geneva. At least 11 killed and a dozen injured in Karachi, building collapse. And now for the news in detail. President Gotabe Rajapaksha emphasized the need for formulating a national education policy on a priority basis to suit the rapidly changing situations. The policy should not change with the change of a government or a president. He observed during a discussion with the officials of the Ministry of Education held at the Presidential Secretariat yesterday. The President said that the Cabinet of Ministers, Parliament and the public should be fully informed when formulating an education policy. He said views of the academics, experts in the field and international standards should be taken into consideration when formulating the policy. The President commended the step taken by the Minister of Education to remove photographs and messages of politicians from school textbooks. President Rajapaksha instructed the officials to revive the Nanasa computer program and continue it effectively. He pointed out the possibility of using computer technology as a solution to the shortage of English, mathematics and science teachers in rural areas. President Rajapaksha highlighted the importance of a practical education system to rival the global standards and discard the exam-centered education system. The President instructed to expedite the process of converting 19 national colleges of education to university colleges that would produce teachers with a bachelor's degree. President stressed that the Ministry of Education must show positive outcomes in all sectors, including computer technology, within three to four years. Sri Lanka Railways Locomotive Engine Drivers Union has decided to call off its planned token strike. Prime Minister's media division, the decision has been taken following a discussion with Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha at the Temple Trees. Sri Lanka Railways Locomotive Engine Drivers Union had planned to launch a 24-hour token strike by reporting sick leave. The strike was previously set to commence at midnight yesterday. The trade union action was planned to object a statement made by Minister Vimal Viravansa. The coronavirus outbreak will affect Sri Lanka's economic growth, the central bank has warned, citing the impact on key sectors like tourism and exports. The bank said exports and tourism sectors will be hit while remittances from Sri Lankan expatriates are also to slide. This was revealed by Central Bank Governor Professor W. D. Lakshman during a media briefing yesterday. Monetary Board, which met yesterday, decided to maintain the current accommodative monetary policy stance of the Central Bank. As such, the policy interest rates that were reduced by 50 basis points will be maintained at the reduced level. At the same time, the Monetary Board extended an assurance to the market that adequate liquidity in domestic financial markets will be maintained to weather any impact arising from global developments, particularly due to the spread of the coronavirus or COVID-19. Nevertheless, we expect the Sri Lankan economy to do better in 2020 than in 2019 and record a growth rate of around 3.5 to 4 percent. Following the elections scheduled for end April 2020 and the convening of the new parliament in May, the expected political stability and the presentation of the budget will boost investor confidence further. The current conducive fiscal regime and declining market interest rate. Another key development that I would like to highlight is the recent rise in inflation. In fact, headline inflation has overshot the proje projection. As you are aware, this is driven by persistent high food inflation. Food prices have commenced declining and we expect inflation to revert to 
4 to 6 percent target range shortly and stabilize thereafter. Sri Lanka made Vega EVX unveiled at the annual International Motor Show in Geneva. An emerging local high-tech innovation company will take the automobile world by storm when it begins rolling out Sri Lanka's first all-electric supercar named Vega. In 2013 and early 2014, when we put this team together, we wanted to focus on building cutting-edge technology for the EV supercar market and bring that technology to Geneva. Now that we are here, we feel that this is a massive accomplishment for us. Vega is a small, multidisciplinary team full of engineers and designers who are passionate about building automotive technology. Please, let's unveil the Vega EVX now. All of the major components are designed in-house by our team, including the liquid-cooled battery module and the motor controllers as well. Vega, we have tested 0 to 100 in 3.1 seconds. This car weighs 1,900 kilos. It has 804 horsepower and 760 newton meters of torque. This is a full carbon fiber vehicle with a space frame chassis. As I said before, all of the major electronic components are designed in-house by our team, including, for example, the LED front lights and the tail lights. The Navy has seized drugs valuing more than 6,000 million rupees. Navy Commander Vice Admiral Pial de Silva said the drugs were taken into custody following successful operations conducted 600 nautical miles away from Sri Lanka. The suspects and the boats were taken to Dik Ovita Harbour yesterday. The raid was conducted following a tip-off received by the Police Anti-Narcotics Bureau. Sri Lanka Navy, in collaboration with the Police Narcotic Bureau, conducted a productive operation in deep seas. Entire consignment is displayed here. It was a very successful operation and we worked as a team. I must emphasize that the support extended by His Excellency the President, Honorable Prime Minister, the State Minister for Defense, Defense Secretary and the members of the Security Council uh, for us to engage in this operation. This is a great effort from Sri Lanka Navy and the Police Narcotic Bureau. We could manage to detect more than 400 kilos of heroin and more than 100 kilos of ice. This is the biggest ice and uh, heroin in Sri Lanka. Actually, we received this information one month back. From that day, we put a surveillance duties and all things. Bandar Naika International Airport will be re reopened for visitors starting from today. That's all we have for you today. Join with ITN News tomorrow. Signing off, I'm Pankaj Kulatunga. Have a good day.